Hi everyone, it's Shannon here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am participating in Honeybee Stamps Video Hop for their January release. I'm going to create these two fortune cookie slider cards with some of the newest products from this release. Let's start by taking a look at the fortune cookie sets that came out in this release. First up is the fortunate to have you stamp set. I love the set, love the sentiments in this set, and a lot of them will fit into the little fortune cookie paper, which is awesome. You also get some beautiful scripty sentiments, and the matching die, which I'm holding here on the right, will cut out those scripty sentiments, which I think is awesome. I won't actually use the matching die today, but I think it's a really handy uh, set to have if you have that stamp set. And then the star of the show is the the fortune cookie slider set. This will create three fortune cookies. That first cookie has two layers. Here's the second cookie with two layers. And then down the middle, we have a third cookie. This cookie has two parts and each part has three layers. So that's why there's six dies to create that cookie. For that cookie, we're gonna use kind of the pull tab track or slider mechanism. And then for the other two cookies, we're gonna use this kind of uh, pull um, tab uh, cookie paper kind of mechanism. But I'll show you how to make all three um, cookies and both kind of mechanisms for the pull tab or slider in this video. We're going to start by actually ink blending the die cut. So I went ahead and die cut all the parts for the fortune cookies. We're going to start with the one of the two layer cookies and I'm going to start with the top layer which is actually the detail layer and that's the layer I'm going to have a little lighter and I'm just ink blending the sides of that first with antique linen, my lighter color. Then I'm going to move on to tea dye and just ink blend a little bit more, just a little bit of the edge just to create a little bit more of a gradation. And then on the base here, I'm going to start with a little bit of antique linen and then I'm going to go really heavy handed with that tea dye to create more of a contrast. You're just going to see a small amount of this base layer, but it is nice to kind of darken it up so you get more contrast. And there you can see the two layers put together. So now I'm going to move on to our second fortune cookie. This is also a two layer cookie and I am again starting starting with the detail layer or the top layer, starting with antique linen for the sides, and then I'll grab a little bit of tea dye just to kind of darken and make a little bit more of contrast on that gradation. Now moving on to the base layer, again doing it pretty heavy handed with that tea dye to create a lot of contrast. And you can see that cookie is done. We're not going to move on to the third cookie, starting with the larger part of this cookie, because remember this cookie has two parts, and each part has three layers. Starting with the base, again bas basically just doing it really heavy handed with the tea dye. Now for the middle layer here, I'm going to put a layer of antique linen down first, a pretty he heavy handed layer of antique linen, and then I will grab the tea dye and just kind of ink blend a little bit on some of the air, the sides just to get a little bit of shape to this layer. And once I finish that, I'll move on to my final layer, my top layer, my detail layer. And I am again going to just ink blend kind of the sides with the antique linen. And then I'm going to grab a tiny bit more of tea dye just to kind of darken the edges a little bit and kind of enhance that gradation. Now that I've just about finished that, I'm going to darken the base just a tiny bit more just so I get some more contrast because I want these three layers to really kind of look separate. You, of course, you could use color cardstock if you prefer, but I do like the control of ink blending, how I can kind of create a little bit more um, of the illusion of shape to these. So I'm now moving on to the second part uh, of that cookie. Again, started with the base, made it really dark. Now I'm on the medium shade kind of and I started with the antique linen, then a little bit of the tea dye, and then I finished with that tiny little piece and just did it with the antique linen or just ink blended it with antique linen. And you can see here how these three layers line up on that last part. So now I'm ready to go ahead and adhere these pieces together. I'm starting with my two layer cookies, just adding glue to the top layer and sticking it down onto the base. This is one of the parts of my three layer cookie, so I am gluing all those layers together. And I did actually glue the other parts layers together off camera. Now we're gonna move on to stamping our sentiments on to our paper uh, strips for our fortune cookies. Two of the strips have the little tab on the end. And I'm just placed those strips after I die cut them back into the, the negative piece and that makes it a little bit easier to stamp on it. 
Now I'm going to kind of put these together. First, I'm going to take this slimline thin frames die and die cut some really thin strips of heavyweight cardstock. And then I'm going to stack two of these strips together. This is going to provide a little bit of dimension and it's going to make it easier to um, for my pull tab to kind of move in and out of my fortune cookie. And um, it's just going to provide a little bit of that, of that dimension, which is going to make that easier. So this first fortune cookie has a nice little slot cut into it by the die. And this was really easy. Just kind of slide your paper in through that slot. But we're going to kind of um, make a little uh, like track for it just to make sure it kind of stays put and doesn't move around too much. And that's where that thin strip of paper or thin strip of stack paper is going to come in play. I trimmed it down to make these two little pieces here and I'm going to glue them on either side of that kind of pull tab paper. And once I have that in place, I'm almost done with this. I'm just going to add one tab, one little bit of uh, stack paper to the back side of the tab here just so it doesn't kind of fall out of the cookie if you push it too far. That's going to make sure that that doesn't happen. And now that I've got my little track completed, I'm ready to just kind of enclose this up. And you can see it stops thanks to that additional, that kind of extra bit of paper at the end of the fortune cookie paper itself, which makes it nice. And you can just see I die cut another base and just adhered it right to the back. And that completes that fortune cookie. Now the second fortune cookie, we don't have a little slit cut in this. So we're gonna have to, um, not only create a track, but also create a way to stop that fortune cookie from kind of coming out when you pull all the way, coming out of the cookie itself, or I'm sorry, the, the paper from coming out of the cookie itself. But first we're gonna start by creating our track just like we did with the first cookie. So I'm gonna create, add two of these stacked uh, paper strips onto either side of the paper strip, being mindful not to go um, beyond the tab, the extra tab that's on that paper strip. So now that I've got those two glued in place, I'm going to also add a little bit, or one of those paper strips to behind the pull tab that again stops it from kind of being pushed out of the cookie when you push the paper back in. And then because this didn't have the little, the little slit in the um, die, the cookie itself, I'm gonna have to make a little stopper here on the end. So I cut two little tiny pieces of that stacked strip so I can kind of glue them on either side at the very end of my track and that will stop my um, paper from coming out of my cookie when it's fully extended, fully pulled out. So you can see there how it works. So now that that's all put together, I can also kind of enclose this with one of the additional die cut of the base. You can see here it's just, I cut out a white cardstock and I just added liquid glue to the top of all of those uh, stacked strips and that will complete that fortune cookie and its little pull tab. So now that those are done, I'm ready to move on to my third cookie. But before I do that, I'm going to uh, quickly stamp my backgrounds. I have two panel here, panels that are of colored cardstock that are a little bit smaller than A2, and I stamped them with that fortune cookie stamp in tone on tone ink. And now I'm going to move on to that third cookie. First thing I'm going to do is adhere my paper strip to that back part of the cookie. Then I'm going to grab a piece of tape and kind of tape them together just temporarily so I can kind of see what size this is going to be and where I want it to be on my card front. I'm going to grab the uh, kind of channel die that's included in the set, place it, and then run it through my die cutting machine to cut that kind of channel for my uh, slider card to work. And I'm going to keep that little insert piece, that little negative piece, because I'll pop that in later. So I'm going to put this on the card front, but before I do that, I need to kind of build up some dimension here on the back so that slider can move. And I'm going to stack three sheets of heavyweight cardstock together, or three little pieces of heavyweight cardstock together to fit behind the uh, back of this panel. And this is just going to, again, provide a little bit of dimension. And I'm just going to leave that kind of an opening around the channel so again the slider can move freely 
and I'm also going to do three pieces of stacked heavyweight cardstock at the top part, again, to kind of provide some support and cre create that dimension. After I've created those, I'm just going to add some uh, tape to the back and just adhere them to that colored cardstock. Now that those are in place, I'm going to add some more support. So I did uh, stack three of those strips that I created earlier with the slimline uh, thin frames die set. Just stack them together and now I'm just going to glue them in place. Just to add some more support. And that little piece of cardstock there is going to be my actual kind of a slider for this card. So I'm going to tape it in place while I add some liquid glue to the back side of all of these stacked pieces of cardstock and then I will go ahead and adhere it on to my card front. Once I have that kind of stuck down I'll then remove that tape and that channel can move in there but before I get ahead of myself I'm going to add a little bit of glue and then tuck in that little strip that I die cut that I saved when I die cut because I'll keep it kind of this really seamless look. Now I'm going to use these foam kind of adhesive dots, add three of them to that little slider tab or slider piece that I popped in there, just that one piece of cardstock. And now I'm almost ready to add my cookie, but before I do, I need to grab some foam tape. I'm going to use a really thin strip of foam tape. It's only one eighth of an inch here, and I'm just going to add it to the very bottom of the top cookie. That top cookie needs a little bit of support and dimension to allow that bottom piece to kind of move freely when you pull on the pull tab or pull on the slider. After I've got that in place, I did remove the backing on that thin strip already, and now I'm going to remove the backing on those little dots of it, foam adhesive, and then go ahead and stick my cookie down in place, and then I'll remove the um, tape that's holding them together, and now you can see my, pulled, my slider in action here. It's pretty much all ready to go, and this card is almost done, except for I have one last thing. I want to stamp kind of the second part of my sentiment. I'm going to use a, a stamp from the um, Fortunate to Have You stamp set. Just stamp it in black, and once I have that done, that card is complete. Now I'm going to finish up this first card, and I'm going to use uh, one of the backings that I created and both of my fortune cookies for this one. This is kind of like a combo sentiment. I'm just going to add some liquid glue to the back side of these kind of pull tab fortune cookies. Uh, stack this second one a little bit over, or over, overlap it a little bit with the first. And actually once I get those down, my uh, second card is complete. So now I can hold these up to the camera so you can get a good look. I really love how clean and simple these are, and the interactive element makes them so fun. These would be great for Valentine's, for your friends, but they can also be used any time of the year. And you can see we can give a really good pull on these fortunes, and they're not going anywhere thanks to that track kind of mechanism we made. They're really nice and tight and snug in there. Here is the second slider pull tab that we created. This one's really kind of a fun interactive element because it's almost like you're breaking the fortune cookie itself open to get your fortune which is really fun and again a really beautiful classy clean and simple look uh, paired I think really nicely with that fun interactive element. I hope you guys enjoyed today's cards and video. If you have any questions on the products I use please check out the links below in the description and if you like this video I'd so appreciate it if you left me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful day.